Hello everybody and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. Whether you're a trained archaeologist, an independent researcher or just somebody with a passing interest in history, Google Earth really is an incredible research tool. We can view any part of the world in superb detail and the satellite pictures that make up this interactive globe are updated year after year, sometimes twice a year. And as well as seeing the planet as it appears today, we can also scroll back through the archive and compare parts of the planet through time. This is very useful because sometimes we can view sites like Karahan Tepe before excavations even began and compare it to how it looks today. Furthermore, subsurface features can appear more or less prominent in different archive pictures. This is because of climatic changes, the seasonal variations, how saturated the land was when the pictures were taken and so on. So again, we can scroll through the archive of satellite photographs and view specific patches of ground at different times of the year, in different years. And this is helpful because such variations can help us see possible buried structures more clearly. Whenever I research any site, the first thing I do is find it on Google Earth, and I then drop a pin on its location. This has been very useful in my recent research into the pre-pottery Neolithic of the Fertile Crescent. For example, whilst making my recent video on Karahan Tepe, I spent ages on Google Earth looking at the land across the valley, away from the main excavations, which at present is an unexcavated part of this enormous 10 to 12,000 year old site. Interestingly, on Google Earth we can see this large oval feature, and its diameter is exactly the same as the excavated large enclosure known as AD. So, by using Google Earth, it looks very likely we have another large enclosure at Karahan Tepe right here. And archaeologists can use satellite imagery, together with geophysics, to decide where to excavate in the future. Using satellite imagery in archaeology actually has a specific name. It's called space archaeology, a cutting edge and modern way to study and also protect the ancient sites of the world. And this has been pioneered by archaeologist Sarah Parkak. If you want to know more about this subject, Sarah has a number of lectures and TED Talks on YouTube. The great thing about Google Earth is that it is accessible to everyone. We can all get involved, and there is a growing community of researchers on Twitter. I have a friend who runs a Twitter account called Globespotter, and it's because of his account I'm making this video today. He has spent many years analysing satellite imagery on Google Earth, looking for anomalies and points of interest, and he posts all of his findings on Twitter. And this does generate a lot of discussion with like-minded people. Before we go further, please do follow Globespotter on Twitter. I've left a link in the pinned comment and also in the description below. Some structures he posts about may be truly ancient, some may be more historic than ancient, some of them might even be modern. A number of his finds on Google Earth may already be known about, and others could well be new discoveries. But what he's doing is generating substantial interest in this accessible subject of space archaeology. For example, here is a site of interest in Leicestershire, England, where I live, and we can see what looks like a plan of roads in a field. If Globespotter had found this and posted it, I could chime in and say that this is actually the deserted medieval village of Hamilton, located between the villages of Scraptoft and Barkby. It began life in the 12th century, had a chapel and houses by the 14th century, but was deserted by the 15th. The reasons why we don't know. Driving through this area today, and we can actually see bumps in the grass where houses once stood, and we can see the roads and pathways on Google Earth very clearly. So, Globespotter could have made this observation through his research, and posted the image on Twitter, 
And then, being part of the community, I could have helped to give this specific image some context, just because of my own local knowledge. Globespotter doesn't make any bold claims in his tweets, he doesn't always say exactly what he's found, but that's where the community comes in. Discussions begin, some people undertake research, and many ideas are offered. The more people we have looking on Google Earth and joining in the discussions on Twitter, the better. It really is a great way to get involved, to talk to like-minded people, even if you're someone with a busy life and just has a passing interest. Globespotter has posted about mounds, structures, specific geometric shapes, possible geoglyphs, ancient quarries, some fascinating natural wonders, and sometimes just unexplained anomalies. He already has more than 1,500 followers on Twitter, and it would be great to see this grow, to make the community even bigger. He's also recently started a new YouTube channel, also linked below. So to help, what I'm going to do for the rest of this video is run through a gallery of discoveries posted by Globespotter, along with the coordinates, so you can take a look yourself and then maybe get involved on Twitter. I really do find this sort of thing quite fascinating, and I'm sure many of you do as well. So, without further ado, here is the gallery, and thank you for watching and enjoy.
thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.